dearly beloved. God bless you all for showing up here today for the funeral. Amen. Funeral Amen. of a good thing. Amen, funeral for hip hop. Amen. Jesus Lord, hip hop is dead. Dead, you took him away from us here. But before we go on to commemorate the celebration in the spirit of hip hop, we need to give a super rest in peace shout out. To I know a lot of people don't want to hear this, but I'm being real. I'm being real. Rap music is down 40 percent this year I'm say it again rap music is down 40 percent check the charts check the math I don't make the rules I do not make the rules it's down 40 percent what are we as rappers producers composers Etc. Gonna do about this shit. Cause it's down 40 per cent this year. Check the charts. Do your research. This is a fact. Yo, if you're looking for some encouragement or some inspiration as a hip hop fan, then this is not the video for you. Uh, as you can see, that was Juicy J from 3 Six Mafia earlier this week. He went viral for basically keeping it a buck about the current state of rap and that fact that the interest sales everything down 40 percent and this is supposed to be a year where you're supposed to be celebrating the 50th anniversary you know now when i said this months ago people was telling me on here and on instagram and everywhere well, oh man you you just being negative man you don't know wait till cole come out wait till kendrick drop wait till drake aubrey dropped last week and how did that go i don't care about the numbers i'm talking p p quantity over quality, quality over quantity. How did it go? Because right now you just got a lot of quantity, but the quality is bad, real bad. The product is not good. And Juicy J ruffled some feathers. I, I think Wallow wrote an open letter about the current state of hip hop and he's concerned. And I'm like, yo, Wallow, it might be time to listen to some jazz or something else, Playboy, because they're not making music for people over 40. They barely making music for people my age in their 30s. You know, it's always been this way. You know, there's a young targeted audience and hey, you know, at some point we got to hold ourselves accountable because we keep accepting this. We keep by, by and I don't know if it's because of routine. You just by routine. If you, if you are listening to the radio and you, you know, you listen to hip hop, you're going to have it on a hip hop station. You're by routine. You're still tuning in and watching these award shows because of routine. You're still you know, in the loop. And it's like, if you, you're not supposed to. Sexy Red, I'm not supposed to understand Sexy Red. I'm a grown-ass man. I'm 30-something years old. What the hell? You know what I mean? I'm not, a lot of this stuff isn't for us. But I'm not here to defend it either. Uh, they did the BET Hip Hop Awards last night. Uh, and I, people always say, oh, you just be talking. How many times have I told you they do this pre-recorded and they do this in an auditorium? They did this at the Cobb Energy Performing Arts Center <laughs> in, outside of Atlanta. This was not the Ben's Dome. This was not some big show feel. So, eh, forget that all the way. They they did this last, uh, the hell, they did this last week. And Fat Joe uh, hosted it. There was a lot of uproar about that because Fat Joe, a lot of people are starting to really catch on to the fact that he uses the N-word a lot. Um, being from the Bronx, Fat Joe just throws it around freely. And there was actually uh, some some people from the black delegation wrote a letter that they didn't feel like he was fit to host the BET Awards. Fat Joe was running around saying that he thinks Puerto Ricans, uh, the, I don't want to paraphrase him, he thinks Hispanics uh, basically are 50% responsible for hip hop. And he was saying a lot, a lot of wild stuff, but either way, they brought Uncle Joe out there. He was the host. Um and like I told you, they were going to roll out the same old rappers from 1989 and 2003 like they've been doing all year for the 50th anniversary. But when you get past all of this stuff and you got to sink back into reality and you get past the nostalgia and you get past that high school vibe and you look outside and you see what's going on, it's not good. Don't get fooled and be distracted by all these anniversary shows. Do we, uh, this is not in a good spot. Uh, the Hip Hop Icon Award was Molly Maul. Shout out to him. At one point, the crowd was so dead, 
Swiss Beats had to tell them to get off their ass to give him his props. And here's the thing. I will defend the crowd because I got some scoop. A girl that I know of, she was actually at the taping last week at this cop center. The, the taping started at 1230 in the afternoon. People sat there and they said the show didn't really get popped off till like six, seven o'clock and they didn't feed these people. So you want to know why the crowd was dead? It's probably because they literally was dying because they didn't feed these folks. They had these people sitting there. They took their phones so they wouldn't get on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube and record it just like when you go to a comedy show. Yeah, the crowd was dead for a reason because BT did this. This was some real project shit the way they threw this together. That was a hungry, tired crowd. So if you want to know why the crowd was dead, that's a big, uh, big part of it. The other part of it is because the current artists just stink. So, um, lyricists of the year, I'm not going to go through all the nominees. I mean, we could, but they gave it to Kendrick Lamar. Uh, shout out to my boy Conway the Machine, but yeah, they gave it to Kendrick. Impact track, All My Life with Lil Durk and J. Cole. Look, that's that song with the kids, All My Life. To me, I get uh, slave vibes. That sounds like a slave hymn to me. I get color purple vibes listening to that. You know, all my life I has to fight my uncles and my brother. That's what that was to me, all my life. That won the impact track of the, of the year. Um, what else? Producer, Metro Boomin. Uh, Hip-hop platform of the year. Some girl, Carnisha, please. Uh, yeah, I, I guess Diddy's paying for that. They This one over Breakfast Club. The Joe Budden podcast, Drink Champs. Nah, they, they could have gave that to Drink Champs. I don't know who that girl, what, what her show was about. Uh, hip hop video of the year. Th that category shouldn't even matter anymore. Who sits around and watches hip hop videos? When's the last time you went and checked out a video for your favorite song? That, like, we don't even watch, they don't even invest money in hip hop videos like that no more. But they gave it to Lil Uzi Vert for uh, Just Wanna Rock, a song that came out a whole year ago, but hey. Uh, th featured verse of the year, they gave it to Jay Z. Hey, uh, Jay Z puts out a couple of bars and make y'all feel like y'all know how to make money, and that's all he need to do. Yeah, be the same ones, man. Would you rather take fifty thousand or eat dinner with Hove? <laughs> Give me the fifty G's. I could go listen to Reasonable Doubt. Uh, DJ of the year was Metro Boomin over Clark Kent, DJ Khaled, and Jazzy Jeff and DJ Drama. <laughs> Take it how you want to take it. Uh, album of the year. They might have got this one right based off the nominations. They gave it to Drake and 21 Savage. But the nominations was, wasn't that strong. I mean, the other nominations in album of the year. Look, this is album of the year. They got Pink Tape by Lil Uzi Vert. Glorilla's debut album, if you heard that. Heroes and Villains by Metro Boomin. Uh, Jack Harlow was a nominated. Yeah, another uh, industry plan. And Meg The Stallion for an album I didn't even know came out. These were the albums of the years that they put out there. Not that's not the strongest I've seen. Uh, song of the year, Just Wanna Rock by Lil Uzi Vert. I have no problem with that. Only issue is that that song came out a year ago, but whatever. Uh, new artist, Ice Spice, What Gives. I mean, the, the nominees was Armani White, Central C, Sexy Red, Lola Brooke. I mean, this is this this man. I don't know these people. <laughs> I don't know. That's all I know. I'm getting old. I don't even know half of these people. Video director. Why are we still giving out obsolete awards? Who's watching videos anymore? When the, who's watching hip hop videos anymore? Some dude named Dave Free won hip hop. And I'm not knocking Dave. Dave probably worked his ass off. I, I grew up on Hype Williams, Chris Robinson, the dress the Torero brothers. I grew up in the golden era of rap videos. I, I'm sorry. I just think that's an obsolete category at this point. Uh, live performer, Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar won over Busta Rhymes. That's that's kind of wild to me, but whatever. Uh, Hustler of the Year, they gave it to 50. That makes sense because the, uh, the other nominations was 21 Savage, Cardi B, uh, Drake, Jay-Z, Miami. None of these people was actually there to, to accept these awards. <laughs> I know 50 wasn't coming in there. Uh, yeah, man. Just they gave So So Deaf. Uh, so So Deaf got a, got a, a, a tribute. Like I say, they've been doing this for a while. I knew they was going to give somebody a tribute. They did it with Bad Boy last year. That was like the 15th Bad Boy tribute that we've seen. So they did somebody different. But I mean, it was okay. You will Jermaine Dupree out there. I guess the brat had her baby. 
you know, <laughs> and they did that, and I'm like, okay, you know, it, 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 I just, I, I just think hip hop really, this, this is bad, man, bad. I mean, Fat Joe's up there hosting. You see the clips. Uh, Sexy Red has zero stage presence, zero. Uh, she, the girl didn't move, let alone danced. She, she don't move. I mean, this is the laziness. And Glorilla, same thing. Cool girl. I already knew she was from Memphis without even looking it up on Wikipedia. I could just smell it all over. She's not sexy. Stop trying to force her as a sex appeal on us. She's not sexy. You know, like, she can't perform either. I kind of feel bad for these new so called artists because they don't have artist development no more. They don't have people instructing them how to perform. None of that. These are not real artists. These are people who make their own music independently. They throw it on the internet and they get hot. No one scouted Sexy Red. You know what I mean? No one scouted her in St. Louis. She just got hot on her own and they've been pushing her. You know, now our responsibility falls on shoulders because we keep, you know, tolerating this shit. Like, stop clicking on the, the, the blog posts when they put these people out there. Stop watching the videos. Stop consuming it. The girl had a sex tape leaked out last week, and the, the dude had to spit on it to get it to jumpstart the coochie. Like, this is this is getting out of hand, man. This is really getting out of hand. It's like, why do we like to to uh, put people in the spotlight that are the worst reflection of our society? These are the worst type of women in our society, and dudes too. I mean, the baby was out there with curlers in his hair, like big worm. You know, like I, I, it's it's getting crazy, man. Drake is thir damn near thirty six, walking around with curlers in his hair. We we just got a lot of lot of nonsense going on. But yeah, I just I don't have a lot of enthusiasm and 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 optimism for current hip hop. I just don't have it. I've become, I guess, the old disgruntled fan. You know what I mean? When I was growing up, I used to watch rap videos in my grandparents' living room. My grandfather come in the room. He'd be like, oh, what a racket. And he'd just be laughing, thinking. It. But to him, it was noise. I get it now. I mean, for an old man who didn't grow up on hip hop, I mean, that was noise to him. To me, I thought it was great. And maybe there are some 15-year-old kids out here that thinks this shit is the best shit ever. Good for them. I'm not going to ruin it for them. But if you ask me my real opinion, this shit stinks. You know, and when you have to current, anytime you got to keep reminiscing about the past on something, it's because you're not happy with the current or present thing it is, whatever it is about. So when you got to keep, that's what I think about. It's like Paul, it's like Tony told Paulie, remember when's the lowest form of conversation? Every time I see them wheel out all these old rappers from 30, 40, 20 years ago, it's like the OGs got to come save the show because the current rappers suck. I mean, the crowd is as hungry, as tired as they were. When the OGs came on stage, that crowd did get hype for whatever it was. They had enough energy to get hype for So So Deaf and, and all these other people. But when uh, the new artists came out there with that low energy, they, they think they too cool, I guess, to perform. So everybody was like, all right. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's just, it's, it's not in a good space. You know, and every time you got to keep reflecting to the old heads, it reminds me in sports, whenever a team that has a great legacy and they suck, like when the Yankees suck, what do they do? They bring out the old legends. When the Celtics and the Lakers suck, they bring out Kevin McHale, Larry Bird, this one, that one, James Worthy. Let's, let's keep bringing back the old heads to pop the crowd and sell tickets and get TV ratings because we currently suck. That's what this is. I can't wait for the year to end so y'all can stop wheeling out these old niggas from 1989 to save you. The old rappers can't save you forever. Y'all, At some point, the new rappers got to step their game up. I was glad to hear that some of these rappers, young rappers, was getting their shows canceled this summer. Good. Go to the booth and figure it out. Because the old school rappers was killing it. I seen 50 and Buster Live. I seen a couple, like, great shows. Wu-Tang, everybody was killing it. The current artists... Got to step their game up. Until then, it is what it is.